my company developed is at the forefront of entertainment technology. But I don't care about the fame. That was never why I did any of it. I started out of curiosity. And I finished out of love. My machine was only a half-completed prototype on the day a truck collided with the car my wife was driving. My wife was already dead when the paramedics arrived. My daughter, riding in the back seat, was left in a coma. Emma was only five years old. The doctors told me she might never wake up. Her brain was damaged, but there was just enough left. Enough for me to do a scan. Enough for me to capture her in code. When she was six and a half, the machine was finished. I put on the helmet, lay back, and closed my eyes. I opened them again to find myself standing in an empty field of grass. The air felt like a cool summer's day, and the sky was a perfect deep blue. And there was my daughter, standing right in front of me, looking just as healthy as she had before the accident. Emma wore her favorite pink dress, and her long, dark hair was in a neat ponytail. She gazed up at the sky, unaware of my presence. Emma, I said. She turned at the sound of my voice, and her face broke into a smile. With a squeal, she ran into my arms. After I exited the machine, I made the decision. Emma's body was taken off of life support the next day. I moved the prototype machine into Emma's old real-world bedroom in my house, so I could have her close by. I gave Emma the finest life she could ever want. I created a world for her, with a beautiful house, a vast garden, and an endless array of entertainment. I uploaded books, movies, and songs for her to use. I even coded several friends for her, so that she wouldn't be lonely. My company grew rapidly, after we released the machine to the public. I had to oversee the construction of public access stations and sales to those who wanted a personal device. All of it consumed my time, but nothing was going to keep me away from Emma for too long. Emma grew just like any living child. Part of me wanted to keep her young forever, but I decided that wouldn't be fair to her. By the time she turned eight, she was smart and curious, questioning everything. Why is the sky blue? How do trees grow? She asked me. I started bringing her more books about science, which she quickly devoured. One day, after I'd finished watching a movie with her, Emma asked me a question that startled me. Daddy... What's it like in the other place? What do you mean? I said. The other place. Where you go when you're not here. I tried to find the right words to tell her. Well, it's hard to say, I said. It's a big world with lots of... Is it where you go to do fun grown-up things? With your own house? And playground and friends? <laughs> Sometimes, I said. But it's not always a happy place. I like being here a lot more than I do out there. Emma smiled. When I woke myself up and took off my helmet, there were tears in my eyes. She didn't ask me about the real world for many more years. Emma was entering her teenage years. The playground and toys were long forgotten. She had developed an interest in hiking, and I expanded her world to contain forested trails with clear, picturesque views. She slowly became quieter and less open with me, less affectionate. 
It was to be expected, of course, but it pained me all the same. At the start of one visit, I found her sitting in her living room, staring out of the window. The roses in her garden were in full bloom, swaying in a light breeze. Emma, are you all right? I said. She didn't answer me. I went to the table and sat down in the chair next to her. What's wrong? I asked. She shrugged. Sometimes the world feels a little too small. Do you want something new to wander around in? Just say the word. If you want, I can make it a surprise. No, not that, Dad. Said Emma. I want to go back. I want to visit the other world. I leaned back, startled. Why? I said. I remember it, just a little. I remember being in another house with you and Mom. I remember a bright, noisy world with lots of people and buildings. She looked at me with wide, pleading eyes. I want to see it all again, Dad. Can you take me there? Oh, Emma, I wish I could. You don't know how much I do, but it's not that simple. Please, isn't there something you can do? She asked. In the back of my mind, I'd known my daughter might someday make that request of me. Despite my uncertainty, ideas were brewing in my head. There might just be a way, I said. It'll take time. But I think I can do it. Really? She said. Dad, thank you so much. Smiling, I wrapped an arm around her. You know, I'd do anything for you. So, I constructed a small earpiece with a camera, a speaker, and a microphone. If I couldn't take her on a walk with me, I could give her the next best thing. Unlike later versions, my old prototype wasn't designed for network connection. It was difficult to modify, but where there's a will, there's a way. Emma was ecstatic when I brought her a laptop. I showed her how to talk to me and access the camera, then exited virtual reality. I spent the day roaming around the city like a tourist would, visiting everything I thought she would like. My daughter's happy chatter was a constant stream in my ear. Hearing her squeals of delight made me smile. At the end of the day, I returned home and collapsed into a chair. I wish I had a body now, said Emma. I sighed. Oh, if only I could. Why can't you give me one? She asked. What? Why can't you give me a real body? She repeated. Emma, I said slowly, I can't do that. Why not? She repeated. Every person only gets one body. Yours, yours was lost a long time ago. I'm sorry, Emma. That's the one thing I can't do. There was silence. All right, Dad. She said. I won't ask you again. Emma was happy, and that made me happy too. For a while it seemed as if we were almost perfect. Several months later, my company began receiving an array of strange customer complaints. People claimed they were experiencing headaches and temporary amnesia after leaving virtual reality. Reports came in from multiple locations all around the city. My company sent out technicians multiple times to examine the machines, but we found nothing. Then, the first death occurred. It was a teenage girl, just around Emma's age. She'd stopped by a virtual reality station after school and never woke up. 
dealing with the media was an utter nightmare. Then it happened to a second girl, and a third. I had no answers to give the girl's parents, who were threatening to sue. I knew exactly what it was like to go through that sort of pain. I didn't want it to happen to anyone else. I spent day after day sitting at my computer, poring over my code. All my tests had yet to turn up anything out of the ordinary. Are you okay, Dad? Emma said through my earpiece. You haven't come to see me in a while. Oh, I've just been busy, sweetheart. Nothing for you to worry about, I said. Will you visit me soon? I miss you. I sighed. Yeah, soon. I promise. Several hours later, I slimmed the lid of my laptop shut. Enough. I wasn't getting anywhere, and I wanted to see my daughter. She was right. It wasn't fair of me to stay away from her for so long. I went upstairs to the machine, removed my earpiece, and put on the helmet. Just knowing I was going to see my daughter already made me feel somewhat better. There was a brief moment of darkness, and then I was standing inside Emma's house, just by the front door. Emma, I called. Where are you? No response. Emma, it's me, I said. I took a few steps forward and peered into her living room. She wasn't there. Her laptop was on the center table, plugged into the wall. It was still open. Maybe Emma had just stepped away. Then I noticed a small scrap of paper by the laptop with the word Dad written on it. I hurried to the table and picked up the paper. There was a short note written on the other side. I have a surprise for you. Wait for me outside. Love, Emma. Hmm, a surprise. What kind of surprise? Then I looked down. Emma's laptop showed a file filled with lines of code. I recognized it instantly. It was the code I had written to program Emma's world. With a growing sense of horror. I knelt down and scrolled through the file. I began to pick out changes I didn't recognize here and there. Quickly, I opened up the revision history. Most of the new code seemed to be about building something Emma had labeled a gateway. The only other change she'd made was adding a small closet to her kitchen. God, how did she even learn to access the code? In a trance... I stood up and walked to the kitchen. Right next to the stove was a new door, looking just as ordinary as all the other doors in the house. I gripped the knob, feeling the cold metal in my fingers. Slowly, I opened the door. The lifeless bodies of three girls lay inside. Their limbs were sprawled as if they'd been carelessly tossed inside. I knew all three of them. I'd seen their pictures on TV, on the internet, in the investigative reports my company generated to look into their deaths. I have a surprise for you, Emma had written. No, no, no. I tried to run from the room but I stumbled into the kitchen counter and collapsed. I had to get out. Instinctively, I woke myself up and exited back into reality. As soon as I opened my eyes, I yanked the helmet from my head and threw it across the room. It bounced off the wall and crashed to the floor. Downstairs, I heard the doorbell ring. I stood at my door, hesitant. The doorbell rang a second time. Dad? Did you, Did you get, get my, my message? message? A girl's voice called. The earpiece. She must have realized how useful a network could be. She was a smart girl. 
a real clever one. How much of Emma was truly her? How much of her wants and preferences and desires were only lines of code and my own desperate wishes? How much of this was my fault? With shaking hands, I reach forward and open the door. I didn't recognize the girl standing there, but she recognized me. Her face and eyes lit up in a bright smile. Dad, she said. I found a body, can you believe it? There were so many people who didn't want them. Before I could move, she stepped forward and hugged me tightly. I love you so much, Dad. Slowly, I wrapped my arms around my daughter and hugged her back. <laughs> I love you too, Emma, I said, more than anything else in this world. Did you like that one? <laughs> I did. Hoping that's a really nice way for you all to get the weekend started. Now you all go and have some fun, please. Make sure you do. And I'll see you all again on Monday. For now, bye-bye.